Um, another of our in the, the series of first Wednesday of every month uh, webinars, we are the GoGen, which is the Global OER Graduate Network. And today I am very, very, very happy with got uh, friends from the Open Math uh, project uh, who are going to who are going to talk to us about the the Open Math the Open Math initiative. So we have with us uh, Christina Stefanelli uh, from Italy. We've got Daniel Villaron Rubia, who's based in Coventry in the UK, and we've got uh, Dania Kasim, who's joining us from Palestine. So um, I'm not going to speak anymore for the moment, so I'm going to give you the floor, Christina, so you can introduce yourselves or, or you basically take it from, take it from here. Hi, <clears throat> hello, <laughs> hello everyone. Um, hello Bea, and thank you uh, to the Gaudian Network for hosting us. We are very happy to be here, and I'm also very happy to be to see among the participants uh, Lorna, who was, who has inspired a lot um, the Open Med project and the Morocco Declaration, and Professor Fazi from Lebanon who is championing uh, the OER Lebanon group in, uh, in Lebanon from uh, Notre Dame University. So it's wonderful to, to see you. Um, we will talk today about Open Med, uh, which stands for Opening Up Education in South Mediterranean Countries. Uh, I will quickly go through the, um, the project as a whole, the main objectives and results. Um, and Daniel will talk in uh, the detail of about what we have done in the initial research phase of the project. Uh, and Rania will share with us her perspective and what open education means uh, in a country like uh, Palestine. Uh, my name is Cristina Stefanelli. I work at UNIMED. UNIMED is a network of universities from Europe and from the South Mediterranean countries. The aim of our network is uh, to foster the collaboration and the cooperation um, among Europe and the South Mediterranean country um, in the higher education sector. Uh, Open Med, a project co-funded by Erasmus Plus program of the European Union in the capacity building uh, framework. It started in October and will last uh, three years. So we have partners from Europe, Politecnico di Torino in Italy, uh, UNIR, which is a fully online university in Spain, uh, the University of Seville, and Coventry University. And we work with uh, four South Mediterranean countries, Egypt, uh, Morocco, Palestine, and Jordan. And we also have uh, in the partnership uh, ARU, which is a network of Arab universities, and Eden is an associated partner. And this is us on the Hill in Coventry University when we have done one of the partnership meetings. And well, Open Med is all about um, open educational resources, widening participation in open educational resources in the Arab Mediterranean countries. The main objective of Open Med, the moon, is to widening participation and adoption of open educational resources and practices as a bottom-up approach to support the modernization of the higher education system in Morocco, Palestine, Egypt, and Jordan, improving uh, the quality of education and teaching. And this is our road ahead, so what we are trying to do during the three years. So we started with the review of good practices, analyzing what is going on in those countries in terms of open and distance education. Uh, probably Daniel will tell more about it and, um, and what we have learned about open education and, and the different terminologies that we had. So we had a phase in, in the very beginning of the project where we had to, um, to share a common language because in most cases, open education is used as a synonym of distance education and e-learning. Based on this uh, and research analysis, um, we have defined 
we are trying to define um, a regional agenda, a long, a long, a kind of long-term strategic plan for the implementation of OER in the region. And we are supporting universities in the definition of their own uh, roadmaps of their own action plans for open education. And we will do an OER training course, which is a blended training course about open educational resources, which is composed by a face-to-face uh, intensive training week in Torino, which will take place in September, and an online training space, which will last uh, two years, where we will support universities in doing their uh, in opening up their teaching and learning and start in starting their practices, their open practices, and in collaborating together uh, in the production and the use, localization and adaptation of OER. We will also equip uh, centers. So we will equip uh, the so-called uh, innovation centers for open education. So we will equip eight centers in the eight uh, universities. And then there are other activities which are the transversal um, activities of the project, quality and the quality assurance, dissemination, exploitation, and, and management. Uh, this is more of, or less the same, uh, the same thing, but in a more project management um, view. So this Gantt chart of the project, it, the project is composed by seven work packages. The work package one is the review of good practices, which has been um, concluded in August, which is led by Coventry University. As in all the um, projects, we have uh, work packages and a work package leader, but this does not mean that the work package leader is doing all the work. We are trying to do a collaborative work as much as possible. The work package two, which is um, towards a common open education agenda and local roadmap, which is the definition of this long-term strategic plan for open education in, in the region, which is led by ARU. Uh, the work packet three, which is the uh, OER training course design and production, we are now working on the, on the joint production of the five modules of the training course, and this work package is led by by Emir. And then we are well, we will start. We are starting the plans and uh, the, deli the delivery of the training uh, within the work package four, which is training of trainers with the concepts of open education and pilot run. Pilot plan, which is led by Cairo University, and the transversal work packages, the quality and evaluation, the dissemination, the exploitation, and the management. So the specific objective of the project are to raise awareness and widen participation in higher education in open educational resources and practices, define uh, the OER agenda, define the local roadmaps, Teach university teacher. We have um, 60 teachers as a target for the training course. To teach university teacher how to use and use OER in a pedagogically rich context. And pilot startup of open educational practices. The main result, expected results are uh, a compendium of good practices, which is a research report about. Um, practices in the Mediterranean region, the agenda, um, the, the roadmap applications by the um, university, the network of um, innovation centers for open education, which will be activated uh, within more or less September this year, and 70 uh, faculty members trained on the principles of open education. At the end of the course, based on the results of the pilot, um, we will define together recommendations for policymakers, managers of universities, teachers, and educators. And the idea is uh, to push the Ministry of Higher Education to take into account open education in their policies and uh, the managers of the universities to apply uh, open practices. Well, in terms of long-term results of the action uh, we want to foster the, the rule of universities as knowledge providers not only to the uh, students but also beyond uh, beyond the institution we expect to have effects on the quality of the content and on the creation of peer-based network of educators and we also expect to expose students 
to international approaches and internationally, internationally open-minded teachers. So we see open education as a mean and we get the use of OER as a mean also to improve uh, virtual mobility and the possibility for students to be exposed to international approaches. So what we have done so far, uh, the first result is the compendium, which has been led by uh, Coventry University, and you, Daniel, may probably want to talk about that. Yes. Can you listen to me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, well, the compendium, uh, as uh, Christina said, the work package one focus on developing this compendium, which is a, a collection of uh, case studies, but it's also more, it's not just some case studies, it's providing some context for the project. Um, I wanted to emphasize that this is not a research uh, project itself, it's a capacity building project. So the research component is a uh, very instrumental. The idea was to develop some knowledge uh, that could help with the subsequent uh, work packages. So the idea was to start uh, doing some mapping, and we involve uh, Professor Sana El Harbi from Tunisia. And for example, the introductory chapter in the compendium is an overview of the situation in the in the region. And we have to say that there is very little literature on OER and open education in the South uh, Mediterranean region. So uh, we work with all the partners to, uh, to try to provide a contextual view of the situation in each of the countries and also in each of the universities. So if you go to the compendium, you will find uh, uh, some basic information about the, the higher education context in, in all the countries, all the South Mediterranean countries, Egypt, uh, Jordan, Palestine, and Morocco. And then each of the universities also provided um, information about how they understand uh, open education and how open education might be incorporated or not, which was uh, the case most often. Uh, into their strategic uh, plans and their activity. So actually the first, uh, when, as Christina said, when we started uh, to work with the partners, the first challenge was to use, to make sure that we were using the same terminology and reach uh, some agreements. Uh, we found that in many countries, when we, uh, when we use the word uh, open education, the term open education, they tend to think of online education. So it required reaching some agreement about to what extent we wanted to stick to conventional definition, definitions of uh, open educational resources and open educational practices. And in the end, we decided to take a rather flexible approach. So we would consider, for example, things that involve uh, sharing some content in the public web, even if they don't use uh, open licenses. So we would recognize, as an example of open educational practice, a university that might be releasing a lot of content through YouTube, even if they are not using uh, open licenses uh, still. So the idea is that uh, we wanted to identify starting points that could help us build on this idea of uh, fostering uh, open educational practices. And part of the process, uh, uh, as I said, there was a contextualization component, and then we identified a number of case studies. And the, the aim was not to provide an exhaustive view of um, open educational initiatives in the region. The idea was to identify different examples, both in the region and beyond the South Mediterranean region, that could help uh, universities and individuals willing to embrace their own education agenda, we wanted to provide them with some source of inspiration. So what we wanted is provide, to provide a wide uh, range of, um, of examples. So uh, you can see in this, uh, in this slide that we started with a, a review of open educational practices, the partnered country reports that I mentioned. We also included a web of analysis trying to um, to identify the extent to which universities were already incorporating some terminology that could somehow indicate that there is some level of awareness already. 
So for example, we look at where university websites were mentioning uh, Creative Commons or uh, the term open educational resources, uh, thinking that could also help us identify potential actors who might be interested in being involved in, in the subsequent uh, stages of the project. And then uh, we, uh, we reviewed these um, 11 case studies. And even though the work was coordinated by Coventry University, each of the case studies was developed by, by the different partners. Some of them uh, reflect experiences that um, are taking place in partner universities. So for example, the plat platform uh, pedagogique is, uh, is an initiative that is uh, happening uh, in one of the partners universities, Ipsorm University, and they were uh, doing a case study on an initiative that they are already doing. Uh, that was the same uh, for the UC MOOC platform uh, that is uh, happening in Kadia Yat. Um, and then we also wanted to provide a wide and varied range of experiences. So, for example, these two examples that, that I have mentioned, they are platforms that contain some content, um, offer opportunities for interaction between learners and content providers. But we also reviewed uh, publishing initiatives, like the case of the Open Humanities Press um, or the uh, journal Redes, which is a, is a journal in Spanish focusing on uh, social network analysis and is, is one of the most successful open access journals in the Spanish speaking um, uh, world, especially in the area of uh, social sciences. We also uh, reviewed policies. So UNIR, for example, uh, contributed with a case on the OER strategy of the University of uh, South Africa. And, and there are also, uh, yes, in the case of the um, Discover Palestine, it's, it's another example of initiative from one of our partners, uh, and it's a MOOC trying to uh, share the heritage of, of Palestine. So as you can see, it's a very diverse uh, picture, and the idea was to, to provide this uh, sort of uh, overview of what can be done. So anyone who doesn't have any prior knowledge of uh, open education initiatives, they could get an understanding of things that their universities uh, could start doing. And each of the cases provide um, a basic overview of the initiative, some history, the main aims, and then some key aspects that, uh, of course, varied across the different cases because uh, their nature is very different. So each of them focuses on different aspects and, and, and they also provide different lessons that could be learned. Um, one of the important things was the uh, transferability opportunities because, uh, as I said, we wanted this to be a source of uh, inspiration. So even though we acknowledge that it's difficult to replicate uh, initiatives in different contexts, we thought that uh, they could perhaps help to, to inspire uh, some of the universities that are part of the network and also those that will be involved in, in future uh, stages of the project. As part of this compendium, which is a, a report that's, that is available on the OpenMed website, we also, um, we also started a series of interviews with, uh, yes, that's the, there is a hand, uh, there is a paper-based copy that uh, Christina is showing <laughs> right now, a limited edition that there are some copies available. Um, and well, yes, uh, I cannot forget to mention that uh, we translated the executive summary into both French and Arabic, and it's also available on the website, on the OpenMed website. Uh, the main the main compendium so far is only in English, but maybe if anyone is willing to translate, is under a Creative Commons license that would allow you to do that. So we we encourage anyone uh, interested in helping us to to translate bits that they think that they are uh, worth it. So the the series of experts uh, interviews uh, we approach different people. Uh, that we thought that could uh, contribute with uh, some tips and ideas um, based on their experience. So we only asked them uh, to produce a very short video, which on average is uh, five minutes, 
and we ask them to answer just three very simple questions. The first one is, uh, what is your involvement in open education? The second one was to identify some open education initiative that uh, for some reason could be of interest to the target uh, region. And the third one was to provide some tips or recommendations uh, to anyone, any educator or institution who might be considering starting an open education initiative. And this, in this slide, you can see the first uh, set of uh, contributors. Uh, so you see a few UNESCO chairs in OER, like Sandra Harvey or Rory, uh, Tela Hill, um, and Daniel Burgos as well. But you can see also people coming from organizations like uh, Creative Commons, uh, like Paul Stacey, and different um, different experts that uh, are involved in, in different kinds of organizations and initiatives. This is an, I mean, we use this data also to inform some of the conclusions uh, reflected on the compendium, but we have to say that this is an open series of uh, interviews. So if you would like to contribute, we will be also more than uh, welcome to to incorporate your contributions to the series of uh, interviews. Uh, you can find them in YouTube. Um, if you go to the OpenMed website, you will also find them there. So if you are interested in helping us with uh, to expand this series of interviews and you would like to volunteer or you know someone who might be an interesting uh, person to participate with in this initiative, please uh, let us know because we would really like to, to keep growing during the project. And um, just to mention a few of the conclusions, uh, we, after uh, reviewing the different cases and also the, the tips and recommendations from the experts, we came with five main con conclusions that also help to shape and inform the, the agenda. So the first one is that uh, we advise to connect both top-down and bottom-up efforts. Uh, we realize that in, in those initiatives that tend to be successful, there is this um, convergence between some bottom-up uh, interest, but also some support uh, coming from the from the top. Uh, the second one is that it's very important to to provide support um, to staff. So providing some academic development opportunities like the course that we will be offering as part of open med, of open uh, med is, is very important um, it's, it would be naive to think that uh, open education practices will be adopted without any sort of uh, support or guidance so we encourage universities to consider uh, investing resources in um, in building the capacity of their staff members the third one is that we recommend working in, collab in collab collaborative creation uh, communities of practice. And that's also the approach that we will be taking for the OpenMed course. We're going to be having different uh, learning circles in each of the uh, partnered universities, and they will, they will be working together as a group. The fourth one is to work to enhance the quality of the student learning. And the last one is that we advise to start releasing content under open licenses, because as I said, there are some universities that are doing very interesting projects. They are releasing a lot of uh, valuable content, but they are not using open licenses. So from a legal point of view, they are limiting the, the, um, the uses that uh, people and educators in other contexts might be able to, to use based on these uh, resources. So now Christina can say a little bit more about the, the next uh, steps and also the configuration of the OER regional agenda that we would, lo we would also like to encourage you to comment on. Yeah, well, based on, on, on those findings uh, from the compendium, uh, we have tried to define, to structure a shared agenda, like in high level set of recommendations for opening up education in the region, in countries with those uh, particular that particular context. Um, um, we have defined five uh, main areas, five main categories. So we have defined recommendations for 
open content and licensing, uh, for open pedagogy and practices, for technology, for governance and business models, and collaborative models between uh, the aim of, uh, of those recommendations is to be a starting point, well, it will be a starting point for discussion, so the agenda is still open for discussion, and the starting point for the development of uh, roadmap, action plans, and policies at um, institutional level in the framework of a general uh, vision, of a general strategy. The agenda has been implemented on a common table tool, which is Vectrum, which is code, and it is still open for, for comment, and thank both Javier and Lorna for having participated in the discussion. The discussion. Uh, I will just go quickly. through the uh, main recommendation. So for open content and licenses, an example, to encourage the use of open licenses, to encourage the development, adaptation, and localization of OER in Arabic language, which is not just um, right to left adaptation, which is not just translation, it is also the adaptation to the local context. I believe going around the office. We also promote the adoption of open standards um, and we encourage uh, people <laughs> to take into account the accessibility principle and uh, some of our standards. For open pedagogy and practices, we encourage open approaches to instruction, um, raising awareness to practical experimentation of the rule of open education in educational transformative practices, so as it to innovate, to exchange, uh, to enhance the creation of knowledge through open practices, to encourage the recognition and accreditation of knowledge acquired through open education. And um, the, the development of empirical research, the pedagogical value of OER, so I think that is in the discussion that we had, we probably made, well, there is probably a lack of technical research, so we research on, on the topic, the work of the relevant, that community. We have recommendations for, uh, for technology, which is not central, but still uh, we should ensure, ensure equitable access to ICT as a requirement in the adoption of production of OER. Open standards and format and decentralized and federated solutions to knowledge management for, in order to facilitate the creation of interinstitutional and regional learning. Um, for the governance and business model, uh, we encourage the implementation uh, of inclusive OER institutional policies, the empowerment of OER champions. We had a little discussion about that since we are now about to train a large group of educators. Uh, we thought to invest more on those who already have an open mindset, let's say, or who are already championing OER instead of convincing everyone, foster an OER culture, and develop institutional and cross-institutional certification models. Uh, for the collaborative models between institutions, we encourage inter-institutional collaboration, uh, interaction with regional and, and institution, international initiatives, the collaboration beyond the border of the universities, and we encourage and promote academic research networks into open education in the other countries. So just to go through the main, quickly through the main recommendations, and uh, yes, it would be really interesting for us to have your feedback on. So we've been discussed the the agenda and at, at, the, at the high level, 
research level during uh, the open medicine in, in the four countries. So we had national strategic forums in uh, Cairo, hosted by Cairo University, in Morocco during the Open Education Day, where we also start discussing about uh, the declaration, we are Morocco declaration, uh, which has been also supported by Lorna in, in, in the key structure and principles. And this is, idea, this is an idea which came uh, from the educators in Morocco put together in the definition of the declaration and their institution, and the Ministry of Higher Education, policy, in Open Education Day in, in Morocco, in Asia, yes, inshallah. We are really advancing a lot to put forward the agenda for it. And we had another forum in Jordan, hosted by uh, Princess Sumaya University, and the last one, uh, last April, in, in Palestine at the state. So, the next step of the project is the training of trainers. We have uh, we announced the modules. The training will start in, uh, in September. Are you about to talk about that, Daniel, or do I go ahead? Um, yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Well, actually, this uh, work package is being led by uh, Fabio and, and Daniel and the colleagues in, in UNIR, uh, but they couldn't be with us today. So uh, I'm sure that Christian and I uh, can uh, talk about the basic of the work package. Um, it, this is a we're going to be piloting this open course with a group of uh, teachers from each of the partnered universities, but also this is open to other partners in the region, which will be again selected by, by the partners. So the idea is to create a network uh, that will keep working beyond the life of the project. And hopefully uh, the teachers who are going to be involved in this pilot will become eventually facilitators. So it's not about training um, academics uh, on an individual basis. The idea is to create communities of practice that will hopefully flourish in each of the universities. Um, in this case, we are going to start with a one week um, a week of intensive training that will take place in Torino uh, in September, and then after that. Uh, participants will will be involved in an online phase that will last between October and March, I think. Is that right, Christina? We we had some we had a meeting uh, a few weeks ago and we were discussing the duration of the project. And, uh, finally, we reached a consensus, so, so it's going to be from October to March. And during this time. Uh, the participants will have uh, the opportunity to develop some uh, their own practice as teachers and open open up their uh, teaching practices. So through different content that we have uh, prepared, uh, there are um, there are four sorry there are um, modules. The first one is going to be an introduction to open nesting education. Uh, there will also a module on open licensing and copyright. Uh, another module on creating and reusing uh, open education resources. Another one that we think that is also uh, one of the uh, more unique uh, contributions of open med is a module on localizing OER and MOOCs, because we tend to think that there is a little attention on the importance of localizing and modifying OER uh, and tailor them to the specificities of the context in which they are going to be used. So rather than expecting people to uh, just take pre-existing content and, and making use of this straight away, we would like to work with uh, the teachers and help them um, um, learn ways of localizing and adapting this content to meet the needs of their um, uh, learners. So there is, there is uh, also some um, 
some content about the uh, interpersonal communication and how to engage audiences uh, from different cultural backgrounds. And the last module is about uh, open educational practices. Um, this is being led by uh, Birsay University. So if uh, if Rania managed to get online again, I'm sure that she will be able to share some more detail about that module. Um, the dynamic is that each of the groups, each of each university is going to be uh, facilitating uh, a cohort of students. Um, we are also open to to other uh, universities who are not part of the OpenMed uh, consortium, but they, if they are uh, members of uh, UniMed or ARU, they still participate and benefit from the training. Um, this is going to be the pilot stage. After that, we are going to be, of course, um, maybe as a, it can be a sustainable course. So any university, whether they are part of the Open Network or not, they are more than welcome to take the content and develop their own iterations of the course. And I don't know if I missed anything, Christina. Would you like to add anything or, or you can maybe just move to, uh, to the next stage? I think now, now we are in the middle of the it's a difficult, but very nice exercise that we are doing, trying to collaborate in eight on, on five modules. So we are recording videos in countries, setting guidelines, and we are collaborating on the cocktail production, and then we will translate everything into Arabic and French. And in the end, I think it's been well, probably this mechanism of the learning circle is, is probably uh, one of the most interesting things that will hopefully work is the idea of having a decentralized learning circle so everyone can start up a new learning circle in, in their own university with a small group of learners if they want so this is the idea also after the pilot phase of the training and uh, the course so everyone together with this uh, recommendation to, to not to take the online course as is, but to uh, establish a learning circle to work face to face, meetings together, taking. So the next phases would be uh, well, we continue the online conversation on the agenda. Uh, we are still defining the institutional action plans. And uh, yes, sharing knowledge and building capacities online. In case Rania and Oka, it would be great, I think, from her perspective about how we are in school in Palestine. Okay, I'm trying to guess uh, Rania sorted. Um, Rania, if you can hear me, it's, it's just click on the little, if you see the little audio microphone icon, just click on it, you should be able to speak, no problem. Hmm. Okay, let me try this again. According to my the system is telling me that the connection is good. So hang on. Rania, are you are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, 
but she said that she tried to disconnect and reconnect. So I think that's there are questions or I don't know if for also what's going on in Lebanon with the who we are Lebanon and the uh, to be honest, I lost you there. I don't know what you said. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, questions, if there are questions. I, I'm not sure I stuck of the chat room, but I can read it quickly. Okay, that's a good strategy. Do we have any questions in, in, before uh, Rania gets here and uh, hopefully we, she'll be able to reconnect again. I have a question as in how do you manage um, the language, the different languages situation because I'm thinking that not everybody speaks English um, within the partners but also the, 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 the training the trainers base. Um, how is that going to work? Is, is it just basically through English all the time? Uh, yes. Our English is, is a broken English as well, because I'm Italian and my English is not perfect and we just try to understand each other. So the main language is English. Um, the partners working on the project are excellent in English. And just but then the partners are going to be translating some of the content into Arabic. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's obviously a challenge, but uh, we are going to start working with this community of people who uh, can work in English. And then the idea is that the project will be, the content will be translated as well. But the people involved in the pilot, they, one of the requirements is that they will be working in English. Rania says that she can hear us, but apparently cannot speak. Um, I know she. It's for some reason her, her microphone is not. Um, it's it's not it's not really connected. It's not engaging. But uh, uh, I don't know. Anybody else has any questions in the meantime? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, Javiera, Javiera is the external evaluator for, uh, for OpenMed. So she's pretty much aware of how many grammar mistakes we do. Um, so we just use broken English and French, and uh, our partners. From time to time, they talk Arabic, but not that much. And we had some discussions about the translation of open educational resources into Arabic for the Maghreb region and for the Mashrek region, because the term education is different. So there are, you're from, from a broken English to a very detailed, um, very detailed differences in, in the Arabic language. But still, we use English for the internal communication and classic Arabic for uh, the document that we translate and uh, and the training course. I seen another can can you still hear me? I've seen that there was another question if we are using the peer to peer uh, learning circle model and yes I'm so sorry, but I don't seem to be able to to get uh, Rania to speak. Um, no, I don't. I honestly don't know why. Um, I, it's just not. Apologies for this. Can I ask another question in the meantime? I don't know if anybody has any other questions. What? Um, 
I'm very curious uh, because one of the things that we have seen is that talk to you go and talk to people about open educational resources um, and you go and ask them directly oh do you know are you using open educational resources they'll say like no um, so it's kind of a mismatch between actually awareness having that awareness of what's open educational and open educational resources and um, but they you know they do find that they they some of the 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 actions or some of the habits they have so they they do actually uh, practice some you know some of the stuff they do is is could be regarded as open practice even if they don't label it themselves open uh, see what i mean so i was wondering whether you have found that similar situation in in south mediterranean countries as well as in you know people do open without realizing that they're doing open basically Yes, well, I, as I said before, it really depends on which definition or how how um, specific or how particular we are about the interpretation of a. Uh, so, if we talk about the definition of uh, the five R's, if we talk about using uh, Creative Commons licenses that um, allow for reuse without very little restrictions, uh, in that case, probably uh, we are not seeing that much practice, but if we open our view on what is openness in education, we see many people who are already sharing and maybe they don't care about the, the intellectual property um, um, conditions under which they are releasing their content, but they are effectively opening up their practice. We think that it's important to, to use um, uh, Creative Commons licenses, open licenses that allow users to reuse as much as possible uh, the resources. So that's part of the training and that's why we are raising awareness of the use of Creative Commons and a uh, public domain. Uh, but yes, as you said, there are people who are already working in the open. They are using YouTube, they are using different channels to distribute content. Um, so it's now about raising their awareness and, and, and seeing how they can also open even more their practice. Well, there is another another point, is just to make an example, at, at the very beginning, uh, you know, the, the, the OER mantra, which is that OER reduced the cost of education. And for countries like Morocco, this is just not relevant because the cost of education is zero. But then for them, reducing the cost is reducing the cost of the production of open educational resources. So they have this initiative, which is called uh, UKAMUK, which is an initiative they, that they have, uh, which is focused on the creation of MOOCs at no cost. So it's reducing the cost of the production and reducing the cost of the stuff involved in the production, because the production of the MOOC can be super expensive. And now they want to have this mobile studios because this initiative is, um, well, there are many professors in the universities who want to record the lessons and put the lessons online in their meetings or at YouTube. And the center is very small. There are only six or seven persons. And now for the equipment, what they want to do is to um, create like mobile studios. So they will use a bag with a laptop and uh, a camera and guidelines for professors, so professors can take uh, this bag and create their own uh, studio in, in the office or at home and record the lessons for for the YouTube channel or for the news. So it's been interesting to see that um, reducing the cost is still interesting, but it's not for the students, it's for the university, for the institution and, and for the professors. So we have been doing a lot for that. It's very interesting actually very very interesting see i i am very interested in a different like the different discourse when we actually try to like sell open education uh, 
you have to be you know it's it can be so different depending on on basically what what country you're in yeah um for some reason i i have to apologize it is it's really for some reason i can't get rania she's i can make her a presenter but they just like in terms of speaking um she's not connecting so i'm also aware of the time so um unless there are any other questions um i think no probably no, not so um what i think it's a it's a very very interesting in initiative i hope that actually you manage to i mean i know you're doing great work and you during the duration of the project it's it's uh, you're going to do great things but you know my my hope is that actually you continue to, you know that this is sustainable and that it goes on so we just keep engaging south mediterranean countries even even you know after the project is uh, it's over. So um, thank you very much. If uh, you know, if you need any help uh, from GoGN or from from many of our guys on on this side, just uh, let us know. We'll be happy to collaborate with you as as um, at any stage and uh, help you or you know just continue the conversation or or whatever. So um, thank you so much. It's been really really good. Thank you again. Thank and I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm Rania. Sorry for Rania, but uh, I have uh, I've shared um, a link to an interview that we have done to Rania. So, if you want to hear uh, her point of view and why open education is relevant in in Palestine, as an example, there is a YouTube short interview, and also I would recommend you to uh, take a look at the OYA Lebanon initiative, which is uh, led by. Party, which is very interesting. Great. Well, definitely. That, that's, I'm I'm so glad you shared that interview with with Rania because I was feeling a bit um, embarrassed, really. So thank you so much. I'll I'll tweet that as well. So uh, great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everyone. Thank you to all our participants as well. Um, Hopefully I'll see you or we'll see you, we'll meet again next uh, the first Wednesday of July. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.